junkies and TV addicts. Uh -huh. Doing this don't mean to bring static. When your Klingons in the fucking house, grab your back street friend, they get loud. Bullet doors off inches, grab you with the bitches. And no, I didn't retire. I that off with the needle nose pliers. Originally, this was the set for Barney Miller. They shot the Barney Miller TV show. And, here. and this, subsequently, Fish. This is Fish's as office. Well. Yeah. Do you not want to talk about the studio? <laughs> All right, there's a studio across the This is the complex. We got the studio, we got the offices, the compound, the training facilities. We're doing a lot of stuff in this room and in that room. There's also a dance room with a choreographer on premises, on site. All choreography is done on premises. And maybe later we'll take you around to the different things. You can see the choreography room, the disguise room, the uh, linguistics, mm -hmm. where we study up for uh, foreign press. Okay. Uh, this is the kitchen. The boards. You know, this is secret info, so I'm going to stand in front of them. So uh, anyway, that was the kitchen. And we also, we have like, tend to have like, say, quick meetings over coffee, uh, if you will, we'll in that area. Not a sample. Seriously, not a sample library. But uh, just various CDs for listening, what have you. What we do is we come in and we start training. And normally, there's about a one-year preparation process for recording an album. This time, we push that out to a six-year prep thing, and then we recorded the entire album in one day. Well, basically, what happened was the last album. Last time was a good album, but um, Coach felt that we really needed to work on defense and stuff on the off season. So the past, I don't know, about three years, we've been working on a lot of defense. And we've been doing a lot of drills here. We have a lot of training facilities in the other room. And um, that's why we don't want to rush things. So we want to really hone our skills defensively, offensively, team-minded. Mike's more of a, like an outside shooter. Adam works a lot on his uh, inside game. I help... Uh, Tighten up the backboards when they're broken. Yeah, uh, make sure that the rim is properly attached to the glass part. Well, the weird thing is there was talk of a trade really? just after. Yeah, well, I don't know. If we, well, which, we, I mean, we can't talk really talk about, about it because there's a lot of controversy. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, the the real issue was who's in the front office, yeah. and it was basically yeah. some people that I'm not going to mention in the front office. I'm just going to say it. They were, they were about to trade Horvitz for the singer of Creed. Well, we have a big marketing research team that, you know, we send that sends out a lot of stuff to figure out, you know, what should, we should Put wear the for that day. Out. Put a lot of feelers out. Professional feelers. See what, what kids are... What, what kids are into in terms of, like, toothpaste and stuff like that. You know, sales-wise. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, one day I'll be rapping down. about, like... Um, Bur hefty burgers and hefty bags, and like by the time that song is done, and a month later, like it's Louis Vuitton, it, Louis Vuitton, and and right. uh, laces you know. for shoes are really important. My brother said that kids don't play hacky sack anymore. Um, what is he talking about? Next thing you know, he'd be saying that they don't use click clacks or hula hoops. Yeah, or those frisbees, sticks. those two <laughs> sticks, or like cheese or, yeah. <laughs> or have huge pants made out of quilts. Yeah. Oh, he's going to say, like, marbles are not immensely popular right now. Some nonsense like that. It's the battle yeah. game. But there's a lot of stuff we do in the studio. We have to get there. We have to order food. We have to gossip. When the food comes, we have to eat the food. And then after the food, you've got to just sort of rest and digest and stuff. And by that time, it's time to go home. Well, there's coffee breaks, I thought. Yeah. That's to get the energy to go home. And then we start it all over the next day. So... <laughs> Starts with some fresh rhymes. Some you do more with some beats, some, though. Yeah, we'll start out. Don't beats, you think? True. Let's start with some beats. Got and a couple then we'll beats. say, you know, we'll listen to some different beats and be say like, well, let's try throwing some rhymes on this beat. And then we'll all, you and know. these are rhymes we'll, that, are, that you're writing for that beat? Yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, then, yeah, then we'll write. The then we'll say like, all right, let's, let's put that beat on for a minute. So we loop it up. And everybody, you know, we take like, whatever, 20 minutes. Everybody writes a little bit. Actually, can grab that's the mics, usually actually what And then we just throw some rough vocals on there. And then we see if it sounds good. And then if it sounds good, then it makes it to phase two. So then we'll go, if the song makes it past that stage, then we'll go and record more like final vocals for it in uh, 
with we'll go in the booth with the headphones and the, the and, fancy and the, the nicer the, mics the 414s you know. the pretty mics this is when john comes into full effect this is john over here can we get a zoom in on john and john actually he runs the compressors and the eqs and the mic pre's and all that type shit that john knows about and then john records the vocals properly well that was john john records all the vocals now. and those are actual lyrics on the lyric stand mm. Red sideways. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we usually actually rhyme to the lyrics vertical. So when you're recording the vocals, do you do them all three at, at once? Yeah. Live, so to speak? Yeah, I go in the middle. Nice. You get, yeah, it goes over there. For us, it's like the only way we really know how to do it, like, is all three. I mean, we'll still, I won't lie, like, sometimes we'll go and do, like, we'll each like this, like, we'll fix, like, a little thing maybe that we did, but... It's the only way we seem to really know how to do it and get it right. It's like all three of us doing it at the same, same time. Now sometimes we've just imported the music as like two tracks, like a stereo track. But when we get closer to needing to mix, then we'll break it out and we'll put the kick drum on one track, the bass line on one track, the snare on one track, whatever. So then when it comes time to hand it off to Duro, then it's much more separated. Yeah. You know. Well, that's actually like a, an interesting thing. That could be at different points, but generally we've done our vo like vocals, not necessarily final, final, but like usually the tracks vocals. are pretty hooked, and then he comes in and just like he came, he'd come in for a week, and then we put up like one track after another, and he would just do some. some he'd take it to it. the take and it to the extreme, and then bam, Durrell come in and do his thing where he really. It's pretty cool. Like, it was cool to watch because he definitely spends a lot of time, like I think has more patience than than we would and also just a really trained ear in terms of like he's very methodical. Like he'll go through each kick drum, each snare, each like really build the beats and make sure each thing is like well, he just hitting in to, the right place. He knows know? how to like stack the frequency so things don't interfere. He takes out wild shit and makes it sound professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Duro. Duro. Like. Duro's been uh, mixing the album with us. You shouldn't ask Dura what records he's mixed. You should ask him what records he hasn't mixed. Yeah. That's a famous ring. But we are almost exclusively computer users at this point. I mean, from the start, like how we all are making our beats, like, I'll I be mean, honest, in my house, like, I have, like, a, I got two MPC 2000s, two of them, and they're just gathering dust right now. Nothing against them, like, they're hot machines, but, like, it's so much easier just being able to do it all on your laptop or whatever. When we started in working, when we started working on License Sale, I remember we wanted to loop a beat, and in order to loop the beat, we had to, uh, we played it onto a like a half inch machine, or it might have been mm -hmm. even a quarter inch machine. Yeah, well, and then we made a, like a tape loop that went like around the room, and we had the tape like dangling up on the mic stands and all the stuff. And we were being really careful to make sure that the tape would keep feeding around. And, uh, yeah. and, and now actually, to loop a beat like that takes like two seconds. Our license to ill is just like was where we were at at the time and drinking beer and acting silly and Paul's Boutique was then like moving to LA and like that was a whole different fantasy like hooking up with the Dust Brothers and you know exploring all kinds of uh, things on different levels I don't know and then Check Your Head was just like kind of getting back to like just more like the three of us and then playing getting back to some of the things we knew how to do already so then like our record whatever now like me like this album is really like New York City last like everything's happened in New York City since like 2002 or 2001 or whatever you know what I mean like that it's the last like two or three years like all of us live in here and and what that represents having fun in troubled times that's a good way yeah. to put it I think because yeah it's definitely having a lot of fun in this record yeah I mean in a way this things are more crazy in the world than they've been in a long time and and so you know some of, some of the record is like a reflection of that, but I think a big part of it is, is definitely what Adam just said, like kind of trying, doing our best to just kind of live life too and have a good time in, in the midst of the 
you know, insanity. I think almost I think that that because when we started the, on working on the record it was much closer to 9/11 and and you know, Bush kind of more recently having just gotten into office, I think that uh, that I think we did more more of the serious stuff I think early on, and then I think we started sort of like loosening up and having more fun with it as it went along. You know, you have to reflect on things, and yeah, we have to speak on things, but you also you basically have to find a way to have a good time, to enjoy life, and to live life as well. That's just part of our reality being right here. I think we are all downtown. Yeah, you know, we are all, all far we away, all. all in our houses. I think people, I think people in New York totally changed at the time. The day after September 11th was like a different world, like in New York. Mm -hmm. I think for one thing, there's been this like tension between police and civilians a lot of times like like in general and that tension like disappeared suddenly everybody was on the same same side or whatever and and we're looking to to police almost more in this constructive way i think and that and that made the police let down their guard a bit more and uh and be much more constructive with people people were out like helping each other i mean i think immediately like there was this very positive feeling in, in the city, I think, where, where people were really just looking out and trying to help each other. And then, uh, and then we started hearing these more like news reports about people in other parts of the country where there was this like racial violence against people of uh, Middle Eastern backgrounds. And I think we were pretty surprised by that. I love living in America. I do. I really do. I, I, I love America for what, for what it could be, what it's, you know, there's there's freedoms in America that we have that people would not even think of that they would even have those they would think of those freedoms but they would never think that they would have those freedoms and it sounds silly to say but I, for me personally I I, I love it here I, I I love I love it here and um, there's a lot it needs a lot of work it needs a lot of work I was about to say I agree you know? but there's a lot of things that could be fixed and be better too it's and it doesn't have to be that hard. There's a few things that, that we all can do to make it better. No, no. That, that's against procedure. But is any one of you more likely to have food in the studio than not? Let's not start a whole thing. Let's just keep going. There's, everything's going positive right there now. There are rules. Mike's about to throw his microphone and off and leave. There is stretching the rules. And there is breaking the rules. What are you saying? What are you saying? Mike. I, I've had enough. I told you. Oh, wait, wait. He's got, you know, coffee. Mike, come on. You come know, on back, Mike. This guy with the coffee on time. I, I'm leaving. I, listen. You don't have a mic. <laughs> you need a mic. <laughs>